almost anything that worthwhile anything worthwhile that has happened in journalism has come from dissidents almost anything worthwhile there are very few great establishment journalists conventional journalism is about the service of power a lot of what we call journalism is really stenography to the powerful it's not that readers want something so we are oh you know we are actually very good guys it's just that the readers are so crude that that could be an argument that the medellin cartel could make it could be an argument that any drug peddler could make you know i'm a decent guy it's these assholes on the street who want the stuff right what do i do i don't believe this for a moment you know if, if patriotism is the refuge of the last is if patriotism is the last refuge of the scoundrel what the reader wants is the last refuge of every intellectually bankrupt editor and owner when you know damn well that none of this is happening for the reader or for the viewer it's happening for the corporates that own these places it's happening because you need to invent an audience that buys your products thinks your way lives the lifestyle you want them to live it's happening because you need to invent an audience conditioned to your framework it's happening because the advertisers need it the sponsors need it the media are the establishment it's not as if you know, they're so interwoven with it it's hard to tell the difference you know although you have the white house where the cabinet of president bush is full of ceos and executives top executives of great corporations right in the bush in the bush cabinet you've had more ceos than any other cabinet perhaps in a very long time if at all the same guys are also media owners they're linked to the media they're also linked they have media power because they have corporate power you remember what lord thompson of fleet said about editorial matter he was asked about editorial matter declining editorial matter in the newspapers he said editorial matter you mean the stuff we used to separate the ads with okay that's what you do with it now look at look at india let's let's take india till 2004 may india was shining press refused to take note of the farmers suicides it refused to take note of agrarian distress it kept shouting india shining india shining india shining and then india stopped shining 600 million voters went out and showed the world what electoral democracy was they rejected the media they rejected the pundits they rejected the opinion polls exit polls entry polls they just dumped the whole thing and changed the government i think it says i think it speaks so highly of the people of this country that they didn't give a shit what the media thought they just went out and did their thing democratically for the media leaders the lives of ordinary people make no sense in their economic calculations and rational they cannot buy the products that these guys are selling so of what use is their of what interest is their lives to the media owners Welcome to the Lord Prashant 2006. We had this fantastic spectacle last year where a gigantic fashion show is going on. Hmm. With 512 journalists accredited to cover it for a full fucking week. What personalities are featuring in If you went there you'd see the journalists and cameramen fighting with each other for space threatening to hit each other this is my my space because they need to get the girls coming down in their clothes with just the right angle right so the 512 journalists covering a fashion week the percentage of people who use designer clothes in india according to the industry according to the industry is something like 0.2 to 1% you had 512 journalists to cover that it's not the journalists fault it's what their media want in the area that nagpur is the main city vidarbha more than 5000 farmers have committed suicide in the last 6 years according to the government of maharashtra 1520 committed suicide in the year 2006 in just one year 
1520 farmers committed suicide you work out how much how many per how many hours that is those 1520 farmers who committed suicide the cotton farmers don't you think that's new sicker huh while the fashion show shows models displaying cotton garments the guys who grow the cotton are killing themselves one hour away not just the guys the guys and the girls husbands and wives and daughters and sons are killing themselves because the price of cotton has been destroyed by Indian government on the one hand and by American and European Union subsidies on the other hand. You do not have a single correspondent in the national press whose full-time job it is to cover poverty. In the country which has the largest number of poor people in the planet, newspapers and channels do not think it is important to treat poverty as a beat. I'm saying if you're not talking to 70% of your population, how can you reflect what you're asking them to reflect? You don't even have a beat. You don't have a beat called labor. You do not have beats called rural. You have decided that 60% of your, 70% of your population do not make news. Then why do you expect the press to reflect the realities of the countryside? You don't even have a beat to cover it. You cover it when 200 people die of plague or something, then they become news. There's no other way of them getting, you know, they, they have to die in sufficiently large numbers to make news. Now, where the Western media saw nothing but disease and reptiles and snake charmers and poverty in India, Right now, the Western media find it very difficult to see anything wrong in India, right? It's the emerging IT superpower, it's the software superpower, the fourth largest cyber nation in the world, as one newspaper wrote. I find that strange. I mean, we'd be the fourth largest anything in the world. Yeah? We can't help it. But uh, anyway, so this is the, what you can call, the Tom Friedman view of, you know, the world. The Tom Friedman brand of journalism. Gee, ain't it wonderful? Look at what's happening in India, right? So this is the this is the Tom Friedman school of journalism, this Friedman school of thought. So th where once nothing nice, I mean, when nothing decent, nothing noble, nothing good could ever be seen in this country. Now it's very difficult to see anything negative in it because it's doing as it's told, it's doing what it's been asked to do which is to increasingly hand over control over its decision making which is increasingly done in the bank, the fund, the WTO. It is to increasingly open up its markets to penetration by multinational corporations mostly from the western world. When it's doing all these things how can you then say that it's doing something wrong? So that's where the Friedman School of Journalism draws its philosophy from. Don't confuse freedom of the press with freedom of the purse. Okay? My freedom of expression is not guaranteed by corporate media. It's guaranteed by the political process, it's guaranteed by the constitution of this country, it's guaranteed by ordinary people who enforce their and assert their rights. Okay? How I would that the media played that role? I want them to. I'm part of the media because I, I believe, I have a vision of a media that plays such a role. Do they play such a role? Yes. Sometimes. Increasingly rare and ever more reluctantly. There will always be glorious exceptions. There will always be spaces even within the worst newspaper. I believe that in the worst of newspaper, you still get the chance occasionally. In the worst publication, you will still get the chance occasionally to do what is the minimum job of decent journalism, which is to signal the weaknesses in society. 